Hi, so I want to talk to you today about what happens after a cold call. So let's just say you've had a successful cold call. What happens after that cold call and how do you make sure it does happen or what's been promised does happen? Hello again. Right, so video today is about um, controlling what um, happens after a cold call. Basically, the follow-up actions that you have after a cold call are so important, sometimes we forget how important they are because if you're going to put all the work into making that cold call, what you really, really want to make sure happens is the follow-up to that so that you get that deal. Okay. I'm going to start by sharing with you an example of a cold call that I received. and. Not because I want to shame the person or the company that trains them, but just to help you to understand why it's so important to put as much effort into the goodbye as you do into the hello. So here's the story. About three weeks ago, I received a call from a salesperson who said they were calling on behalf of British Gas. And now I did ask them to confirm that a few times throughout the call and it seems that they were absolutely adamant that they were calling from British Gas. So you've got to take them for their word really, haven't you? Because I really didn't have any reason beyond that to object to it. I did suspect that perhaps they weren't direct employees, but if they don't want to tell me, I can't really call them a liar and, you know, say otherwise. But nevertheless, I was going to um, look at reducing my energy bills in my business anyway. so. I was actually quite interested. So I did listen to the call and concluded the whole call by just asking them to send me an email with their rates attached so I could compare. Now, I'm going to guess that most salespeople are familiar with this kind of response at the end of a cold call and many salespeople make the mistake of thinking that that means they're not really interested or the customer isn't really interested. Now, if you're one of those salespeople, then you might want to just think again because you could very well be losing a large proportion of your sales opportunities based on that. So the first tip is confirm to conclude. So first of all, confirm everything that you've just agreed with the prospect once again, just to make sure that you haven't missed anything and just in case they want to add something to it. It doesn't have to take very long, something really quick like, um, great, so I'll write to you an email with XYZ, send you a link to ABC so you can take a look at that, da 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 da, then um, diarize to call you on, da 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 da. Okay, so very quick, confirmation of what you've just said. So number two, compelling reasons. Now always promise added value for when you're going to send an email or for when you're going to call back. For example, you might say something like, well, when I call back, I'll share some tips that we have on da, 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 da. Um, And if you're sending an email, perhaps you could give them a compelling reason to look for your email by doing the same. Just add some free value to it. Using the same example as in point one, I would say, oh, and I'll send you a link to some free online learning tools. Number three, get their details. If it's an email address, make sure you confirm it. It's really, really important to get each bit of spelling right, as I'm sure you already know. The other thing is um, with numbers, if you're going to call back, just ask them a few questions. Which number, for example, is a really good question to, to make sure you do ask. This is the best time right there and then to get a direct dial. So try and get a direct dial number. Secondly, ask them when to call them back. How much time do they need to consider this? Because that might actually give you a bit of an insight into their buying process a little bit more or who else they might want to talk to before they come back to you. So that's it. Just a couple of good questions that you could ask them. And also you could ask them what time to call them because it's quite disheartening sometimes to just chase someone over and over again when you've just spent all that time building rapport with them. Leaving voicemails is never ideal, so it's best if you can just get them and when you t call them, you get them. Number four, diarize and reminders. Now there are so many reasons why you might forget about this follow-up, including the fact that you might get another opportunity that sounds bigger or more exciting, or you made it a flexible callback, which you shouldn't have done. So. That's all very well, but a diary full of follow-up leads to a healthy pipeline. And a healthy pipeline is essential to business success. As long as you always have someone to follow up on, remember psychologically what happens is you always have potential business and you'll feel motivated by the fact that you have prospects wanting to talk to you. So when you're feeling a little bit like, I don't want to do a cold call, at least you've got the fact that you've got some people that aren't cold that you've still got to call back. 
finally, number five, email identity. Now, if you are gonna promise an email to anyone, make sure they know how to identify your email from like the many, many others that they're going to receive. What's gonna make yours easy to identify? Now, in the example I used in the beginning intro of this video, the salesperson who was saying they're from British Gas, Remember, they refuse to tell me which company they're calling from. So I have actually been waiting for an email from British Gas. That email was never going to come. Also, he gave me a nickname, which I actually now can't remember. So I would actually never be able to identify that email amongst all the other sales emails coming from similar energy saving companies. You see, I also don't have the time to look for it. And because I don't, I'll just sit there and wait for the next competitor because I know there will be other competitors who will contact me. So that's kind of a lost opportunity there. And this is why at the beginning I said, hold on to that thought about the fact that when they say send me an email, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not interested in you. Sometimes it's a case of they can't find you or they can't find your email. They never did. So if you try and call them back, they're not going to answer because they don't want to tell you they couldn't find your email or they forgot your name or whatever. So you've really got to make sure that they can identify your email. All right. So quick recap. Number one, confirm to conclude. Just confirm everything, conclude it all up and make sure there's a mutual agreement and a mutual understanding on everything you've got to do next. Number two, compelling reasons. Make sure that there is added value that you're just a little bit of a hook to give them a reason to want to come back to you, to want to hear from you again and want to have a next conversation. You might have something really valuable to add to them as a business. Number three, get the details from the person, make sure the email's correct and just ask a few questions about when to phone, uh, what number to phone on and um, what time scales this person needs. Number four, diarize and reminders. I can't really emphasize the importance of putting these follow-ups into your diary. And number five, Give your email an identity. Make sure they can identify your email from all the other sales emails they're gonna get so that when you call them back, they have actually had a chance to read it and they don't say, actually, I couldn't read it or actually, I didn't get it or I couldn't find it. All right, so those are my five tips for making sure that you can control what happens after a cold call. As always, contact me if you want any help applying any of this to your situation. In the meantime, take care and stay safe. See you soon.